Now we're gonna get changed into our scuffs. <laughs> you weren't able to document your life every second of every day. Not every. Hey guys, so welcome back to the channel. Today is the first day of our small animal orthopedics um, rotation. Um, I'm the only one in this room right now, so I can take my mask off and talk to you a little bit. So we've been briefed this morning about the introduction, about how this rotation will run, and then we will we are waiting for our first case today, and later on we'll be examining uh, one of Matthew's dogs, Ali. He's our course organizer. Um, yeah, looking forward to a productive week. Now we're taking Ali to the gate lab to analyze so here we're watching Ellie walk and try to see where she puts her weight on the leg and this is her walking again and then afterwards we watched her trot so making her trot on the tech scan mat and then back again just to see how even her weight bearing is on her legs and then we put her on the treadmill to see whether she changes her weight bearing when she's walking on faster speeds it's quite cute to watch <laughs> There's only two ways, if, you, if you're painful, or you're hurt when you land on something, there's only two ways to change the amount of force going through your foot. One is to change the amount of weight going through your foot, which generally isn't possible because you weigh what you weigh. Mm -hmm. And the other one is to change the velocity that you're putting through it, right? so you slow it down. So when you put your foot down, if it's sore, you tend to slow down, slow your acceleration down, so you, your velocity of your foot is less. As part of the examination, we also palpate her joints and feel for any stiffness, limited range of movement or any noise in the joints. And after we've walked Ellie on the tech scan plate, we then analyze, we then analyze it on the computer and it's quite cool. There's another thorough video that the Cambridge Vet School has made that I'll link in the description box for you to check out and you get a really nice gait report. During the rotation, we also got to see some really cool orthopedic surgeries. <laughs> hey guys, so now we're gonna get changed into our scuffs. You weren't able to document your life every second of every day. Not every second, this is just this week. <laughs> I like documenting my life. Anyway, we're going to see a medial patella luxation surgery and then... Hello everyone, now we're dressed in our scuffs. <laughs> and now uh, we're waiting for the surgery to start. Hopefully it will take half an hour and not seven hours. <laughs> During the rest of the week, we also saw other cases and the common cases we saw included a medial patella luxation, cranial cruciate ligament injuries, osteoarthritis, hip dysplasias, which are very common in breeds like Labrador Retrievers. And it was quite interesting to see how there has been so many advancements in veterinary medicine in terms of surgeries and care that we can provide pain relief and treatments for our patients. And the fun part about the week is we got to do some bone drilling practicals and here is us trying to be potential future bone surgeons. Are you trying to like... 
work out what your angle is and you know align it and, and just do it but I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, it still blows my mind how complicated bone surgery is. I was struggling so much on a bone model, trying to precisely put a pin in and some circlutch wires in. Imagine how tricky it is on a live patient where you only have a small window to move and maneuver the bones in, maintain sterility, have super high precision. So huge respect to all the vets out there who are doing really cool bone surgeries. Hey guys, so I thought I'd uh, share a few things while I'm packing up to go home. So now it's about 6 o'clock and I just finished typing up a discharge letter for my patient. The reason why I decided to film a little bit is because of what our lecturer slash supervisor, I guess, told us today while we were waiting for our imaging results. He was telling us about how when we finish final year and when we graduate BVETS, we won't necessarily be competent and that's okay. I think what really st struck me when he was telling us about it is that how the only way to get better at something is to do it, like to do a skill. And the only way to do a skill is to like have opportunities and of course chances to do it, I guess. Wait, let me rearrange my thoughts. So, I think the only way to get better at something is to have experience. And how do you get experience? You just do loads of cases. Because for example, if you do a clinical exam, you won't really know what's normal or abnormal unless you do a clinical exam on so many different dogs or you palpate so many different limbs because that's how you build your database and then that's how you get better at detecting like oh there's something wrong with this joint there's some kind of weird effusion that i can feel but at the moment now when we're learning it can sometimes be quite upsetting if you don't get it right the first time and you'll be like oh no i've spent six years here studying and i still can't do this like what is wrong with me but no you shouldn't think that way because everything is a learning process and you should set realistic expectations of yourself. Of course, you want to be competent. And to do that, you have to challenge yourself to take on more opportunities. And yes, if you mess up, that's fine. That is normal and expected. If you mess up, try not to fall into a cycle of self-doubt where you then feel afraid to actually do more opportunities and learn. But instead, think of it as like, okay, I made a mistake. What can I learn from this? And then we move on from that. The way our supervisor Matthew said it was way more eloquent and funny, but that was what I got from it. And yeah, today I struggled with the IV catheter and it was very difficult, but I didn't feel too bad about not being able to do it despite being halfway through final year because each patient is different. And I know that with every try and every practice, I will get better. And if I don't, I better do some some more practice and like ask for more tips to get better. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, he was also talking about how your lecturer is showing you how to listen for a specific murmur when you're in front of all the students and you're attempting to listen to it. Whether you can hear it or not with your stethoscope, you're more likely to say, yeah, 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 I can hear it because you don't want to look dumb. But that's not good learning because in the end you lose out because you don't actually understand what's going on. So he's very good in ensuring that we actually feel, for example, in orthopedics, we do a palpation of the stifle joint to feel for the patella to see if there's any luxation movements in a patella. But anyway, he was really good in making sure that we had multiple tries to feel the joint and make sure that we actually understood what was happening. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that and I hope that I can find a vet practice in the future that is as supportive and is good. Mm, okay, chat to you guys later. Bye. So thank you so much guys for watching all the way to the end. If you like this video, be sure to check out other playlists on vet school vlogs. This is such a throwback for me being a year out now uh, and stay tuned for the next video.